साथ India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship, Young Turks turns 21, and we are back with a brand new season of Voices from the Valleys. This season we bring you stories from the front line of what's being called the biggest technological innovation of our times, generative AI. In this edition of Voices from the Valley, we hear from the pioneer of enterprise tech investing, Nexus Venture Partners, and two of its portfolio founders who are reimagining machine learning in the new age of artificial intelligence. Dynamo FL and H2O.AI. H2O.AI is an open source machine learning platform that makes it easy for enterprises to build smart applications. Founder Shri Satish Ambati famously said H2O.AI and its team are like the Sherpas helping customers climb and conquer AI mountains. Used by over 20,000 enterprises, H2O.AI's clientele includes over half of the Fortune 500 companies including Goldman Sachs, Nvidia and Wells Fargo. Some of the clients have even returned as investors and propelled H2O.AI to unicorn status. Dynamo FL owes its origin to a PhD thesis of two electrical and computer science graduate students at MIT, Vaikunth Mugunthan and Christian Lau. The FL in Dynamo FL stands for Federated Learning, which allows the training of artificial intelligence without compromising a person's identity. As doubts remain on an AI model's ability to protect the user data, Dynamo FL says it enables regulation compliant AI as Federated Learning doesn't collect data at all. Part of Y Combinator's 2022 winter batch, Dynamo FL solutions are now in use in the data critical finance sector and even used in the training of futuristic self-driving vehicles. Hello and welcome to the special edition of Young Turks at 21. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're at the Nexus Ventures office in Menlo Park in Silicon Valley. Nexus as you know has been prominently featured on Young Turks over the past two decades as part of our journey. They started in 2006 and today have assets under management of over 2 billion dollars, invested in several Indian startups, many unicorns and many companies that have gone public including the likes of Delivery and Zomato. Joining me today is the managing director of Nexus Jishnu thanks very much for joining us and since this trip we are talking about what everybody is talking about and that's AI we have with us two of Nexus Ventures AI portfolio companies Shri and Vaik many thanks for joining us here on Young Turks let me start Jishnu with you a big uh, fund closing that you've done the largest ever of over 700 million dollars what are you going to do with all of this money <laughs> <laughs> so first of all i would say we are fortunate to have the uh backing of our of some incredible limited partners who have been with us for uh throughout our journey of 16 years and we are super excited to be able to have the opportunity to work with entrepreneurs like Vike and Shree and that's what we want to do our intention is to partner with really exceptional people and help them uh, realize their dreams so that's what we would do we specifically expect to be investing a lot in ai because where ai is today we feel ai is going to transform every industry as we know mm. um and we also do uh, investments in what we call digital india which is digitization of the economy uh but software is everywhere ai is everywhere and uh, that specifically also from founding we had our focus in of investing in US and investing in India mm. you know, as you, one fund and one team. Yeah, and you're talking about AI which clearly everybody else is talking about at this point in time. Do you fear that there is a little bit of a gold rush uh situation going on at this point in time in the investor community when it comes to AI? It 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 is like, you know, like I think okay, two things I will say. Uh in general Silicon Valley and probably technology world is good in creating bubbles and to some extent I would say over the last 6 7 8 months this thing like you know everybody has gotten a feel of what ai is for the first time i would say because previously ai was about recommending or predicting now it is about generating you can generate essays you can generate pictures you can even generate drugs mm. and and it's happening right so that has given people opened up people's imagination mm. but along with that also this thing is coming up oh you know am i going to miss out yes if i don't come in like this this famous phrase of fear of missing, missing out. out yes we are probably getting inundated probably getting paged by 
five startups a day who five are AI all, doing, a day. all yeah. doing AI. So it's, it's a, I, I, the way I see it is, is at the same time very exciting to be an AI investor as well as scary. It's, uh, we are trying to keep up, uh, really uh, understand and have a sense of like, you know, what can make sense, what can be sustainable. Mm. We are investing in companies for the next decade, mm. not for months, not for years, but for next decade. So is there How an AI specific watch as that you're going to be putting to use? So I won't be surprised if many, the question is whether you are investing in AI or not, you are still investing in AI, that's how we see. Mm. We are investing in all industries, right? Like, you know, we have software, we have digitization of education, mm. healthcare, uh, commerce. So across uh, industries we are investing, but I would expect whether you're building a consumer company or an enterprise company, it's almost inevitable in some way or the other, you will be using AI or will be benefited. Uh, by products who are using AI. Okay, so let's continue to talk about the opportunities that the AI world presents and companies that are hoping to leverage that opportunity. Shri, you've been around for a while now. You started way back in 2011. And here's what I'm intrigued with. You say we're like the Tenzing Sherpas of the AI mountains, helping our customers to traverse and conquer AI peaks. What does that mean exactly? What are you hoping to do? AI is about co-creation, right? So if you want to co-create with the customer, because domain expertise and data and AI coming together is where the cone of innovation and, and highest alpha is. We are unlocking that amongst our customers. Most of our customers are transforming the entire organization. So one of the things that Gen AI has done, it's unlocked tremendous value across the whole organization, not just whether marketing or customer success or product. You're able to now bring AI to the entire organization, make it all decisions be driven by data mm. and learning from experiences you're providing to your customers. And it's all conversational. So you're having a conversation mm. with uh, your customer continuously. So that needs uh, companies to make, be trust. They need to trust the AI, they need to climb these mountains, and these mountains are transformative. Uh, most of the time, these uh, most of our customers are competing sometimes against tech giants themselves. Mm. As a result, they need to have that uh, true trusted partner who can walk them through that uh, last mile. Okay, so as a trusted partner, how many clients at this point in time and specifically across which industries are you hoping to walk the mountain with? <laughs> so financial services was the earliest That's adopter the for us, yeah. of course. Uh, telcos are some of the largest customers for us uh, globally, not just here, um, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, but also in India, Reliance and uh, globally. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous adoption in life insurance, regular insurance, property and casualty, healthcare. Um, perhaps the biggest um, regions where AI can truly bring benefit to the world. We, are, we started the company with an AI for good mm -hmm. mission. Mm -hmm. It is actually in education and, and democratizing health and bring equity globally. And what Gen AI has done is that increase the nonlinear uh, transformation across the economy for our customers as well as in the, at large. And that means that they are consistently taking open source AI, which H2 is the leading uh, makers of open source. H2 or GPT is the leading open source platform, uh, open source la large language models, and democratizing, um, kind of powering that voice for every purpose. So mm -hmm. what AI is doing as an LLM is it's giving voice to purpose. So you can now amplify with data purpose and uh, founders, you can bring change across every walk of life. Okay, so you know, speaking of uh, bringing about change, and you talked about uh, the, the huge potential and the headroom for growth that uh, somebody like you is looking at at this point in time. Uh, what do you believe are the key risks at this point? I mean, you know, we've gone from the opportunities in the last six months, what is AI to AI is everything to now AI is going to ensure that we're all extinct. So uh, you know how how do you how do you sort of look at this current debate and what do you believe we need to be mindful of? I mean, Nexus funded us about ten years ago. We were the first dot AI domain. We went ahead and bought dot AI domains for our customers back then, in anticipation that one day one day they will be AI companies. Our vision back then was that AI market's about two trillion dollars in twenty two. And I think we've exceeded that. And what, you're going to, what we're about to see in the next 10 years is 10, 20 people build trillion dollar AI companies. Right, so how do you build large AI companies with AI mm. that are large output and value and revenue generating, mm. but not necessarily large in size. Mm. So you now start seeing 
the arrival of the newer species of AI companies, mm. which will be smaller in form factor, but higher in impact, and go change the planet, right? So, and that kind of transformation is happening, right, um, in our midst. Uh, every day is like a, uh, like a month or, or a quarter in the life of typical um, uh, new innovation mm. for AI. Even from like last week to this week, we have such incredible innovation happening in both large language models. We, For example, we discovered that the largest model, GPT-4, mm. is actually a group of uh, 220 billion models, not a large trillion dollar mo trillion parameter model, which means that that mixture of F FX model problem that we are talking about, that you can actually combine smaller models to produce the same level of efficiency, uh, same level of accuracy, mm. while being capital efficient okay. and smaller footprint. We are able to now demonstrably run much of the inferences on Apple or regular commodity hardware. Oh, okay. So then that's transforming again the AI changing the hardware ecosystem mm. very quickly. Mm. So you're seeing both between the adoption of cloud and data as a source of, as an asset, first class asset of the last four or five years. I think now we're gonna start deploying AI as a, a, as a force multiplier and a superpower. And I, 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 I would, um, I, I would concur with what, uh, what Chishnu was saying. Uh. All companies are AI companies. So it wouldn't be, uh, it's, it's well, essential. All companies are tech companies, are all companies are AI companies. That's right, <laughs> that's right. But you, you raise the point, will we be extinct? Yeah. I don't think so. But the, the fundamentally, every transformative technology made us do more, right? So if we just came out of COVID last year. Um, my daughters inspired me to go build a supply chain for oxygen for India a couple of years mm. ago, hardly two years ago. Um, the, the pandemic killed a million Americans right, sort of, and impacted dramatically yeah. the whole planet. Yeah. Uh, the earthquake in Turkey, yeah. mostly unpredictable. There's so much uh, supply chain because of war, supply yeah. chain disruption because of war, yeah. again, hugely. So we still have virus, we have war, just like 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. Mm. Uh, and so we need to kind of address some of the fundamental, we have inequity, yeah. uh, almost 50% of the world is underemployed, yeah. right? So how do we bring substantial, bring change to substantial problems using this power co-creator with us, this, mm. the, the AI as your partner to go change the world. I think that's, uh, that's still at, I mean, av uh, available for grabs for the world right now. Well, uh, you know, let, let, let me address the, the new species that you speak of, and we, uh, we, have, uh, we have Mike right here, uh, founded his company in 2021, so really a new kid on the block. Uh, you know, the superpower that uh, the tree speaks of, Mike, mm -hmm. how are you looking at what you want to do, what the purpose is, and, and the journey so far? Yeah, I definitely think like AI definitely has a lot of pros. But at the same time, it's really, really important for us to make sure like all these like large language models or like AI models are in fact being deployed in a privacy preserving and in a trustworthy manner. Um, we've seen like chat GPT uh, being affected with like things like hallucinations, mm. right? So it's really important for us um, as AI developers um, to not only build like high quality AI models, but also the models that are like transparent fair, bias-free, mm. and regulation compliant. Mm. Um, so this is something which at DynamoFL we are focusing on is um, how do you in fact um, deploy these like generative AI models in a cost-efficient manner while still being fully privacy preserving and regulation compliant. Okay, so explain to me what federated learning is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Simply. <laughs> so simply, <laughs> federated learning, um, say for example, let's take our smartphones, right? So imagine you want to like uh, deploy an app um, that predicts the next word when you're like, say, texting your friends. Mm. So right now in Google, Apple, and all the other smartphones, the data never has to leave your smartphone. Mm. So your data remains under your control. Mm. Only the AI models are now being trained on these like individual data sources or nodes, and only the models are being transferred to the cloud. And now you're like aggregating these different models and then coming up with a more powerful model and then deploying it back in the um, source node. So by this way, you don't have to ever like transfer sensitive data mm. um, in order to like improve the efficacy of these AI um, Model. models. Yeah, so in a privacy preserving way, how do you in fact improve the um, AI models is what federated learning empowers.